Hello, I'm Alexander Jeffrey, a summer associate with the Clark S. Fosito Law Firm. This presentation will be about export clearances and record keeping, specifically using the automated export system. In this presentation, we will discuss a background of AES, filing with AES, and finally record keeping. The automated export system, AES, is an electronic export information, EEI, gathering and processing system for the U.S. exporter network. AES operates on the Automated Commercial Environment Platform, also known as the ACE platform. AES is utilized jointly among all of the governmental agencies that regulate export transactions. Once EEI is filed into AES, the system will alert the user if any immediate discrepancies are present or if information is missing. AES information is used for statistical analysis, export control, and enforcement. Agencies may open an investigation if they notice that an AES filing is erroneous or unusual. The three regulatory agencies are OFAC, the Office of Foreign Asset Control under the Department of Treasury, BIS, the Bureau of Industry and Security under the Department of Commerce, and the Department of State. In certain situations, other agencies may be involved, such as the Department of Justice, for export violations that are considered criminal actions. 15 CFR Part 30 is the collection of statutes that constitutes the Foreign Trade Regulations, FTR. General information about filing practices and regulations are found here. Information related specifically to AES is found in Part 758. First, we will discuss when to file the AES. Once an exporter has finalized their transaction agreement and successfully obtained any relevant licenses, they must then submit their EEI for review in AES if there is a license requirement or the cargo is valued at 2500 or more. Regardless of value, most filing situations include export of items destined to a country in country group E, exports that require a license, exports under license exception strategic trade authorization, STA, exports under authorization validated end user, exports involving entities on the unverified list. It is important to check all lists for any individuals or entities that may be blocked from export transactions as performing business with them would prompt the need for a license as well. Each regulatory agency has sets of lists with different individuals, but all of the lists can be checked at once using the consolidated screening list, which is managed by BIS. The AES is filed by either the U.S. Principal Party in Interest, the USPPI, or an authorized agent. Any party using the AES must be approved to use it and is legally bound to all filings. Next is the key tool for using AES, the Automated Export System Trade Interface Requirements, ACER. ACER defines the data requirements that are reported to the AES. ACER is broken into four parts. Part 1, General Information about AES. Part 2, Formatting for Commodity and Vessel Transportation Data. Part 3, Assistance in Programming, Testing, Reporting, and Understanding Export Requirements, and Part 4, Alternative Methods if AES is down. Some exporters may develop their own AES, so ACER will serve as a guide to effectively structuring it. For any exporter wishing to develop their own AES, ACER Part 3 is the most important section for them. ACER Part 3 contains 23 appendices that meticulously instruct shippers on how to effectively implement their own AES program. The Census Bureau has listed out what they have deemed to be the most important appendices of Part 3 on their website. These important appendices are listed to the right. Appendices A and B detail filing response messages. Appendix C details the International Standards Organization country codes. Appendix E gives the Commodity Filing Export Information Codes. Appendix F lists the License and License Exemption Type Codes. Appendix K gives the Unit of Measure Codes. And finally, Appendix S defines the AES acronyms and definitions. Now we will move on to the licensing process in AES. As noted above, Appendix F lists the License and License Exception Type Codes. AES serves as a checkpoint for export transactions by checking the validity of relevant licenses with the appropriate governmental agency. 
The most commonly used AES license type codes are listed below. C30, which is licenses issued by the Bureau of Industry and Security. C33, is no license required. C60, is BIS 600 series items. C35 through C59 and C62 are license exceptions. All of these codes will be attached to a relevant application in AES. Next, with AES licenses, are the uses and interactions. Licenses are valid for shipments from any U.S. port unless otherwise stated. If cargo is lost or stolen, after making a report to BIS, an exporter may use the same license to send identical cargo to the intended foreign party. Each time a license is used, AES decrements the license value and returns one or more messages that may state the following. BIS license value has been met or has been exceeded by a prior filing. BIS license value has been exceeded by the current filing. The allowable shipping tolerance has been exceeded by the current filing or the remaining value of the BIS license. The shipping tolerance refers to the fact that BIS allows up to 10% of additional monetary value to be shipped under a single license if it is to be expended within that transaction. Some licenses stipulate a very clear and specific shipping tolerance and will not allow this 10%. ACE ACER Appendix A explicitly details all of the possible responses that an exporter will see during filing. The ones listed to the right are the most common. Next for AES licenses is the documentation. Documents for any transactions need to be completely uniform across applications and agency interactions. If an address or party is different on one part of an application from another, then this will be flagged in the AES system. Mistakes with inconsistency are usually related to a license or the documentation surrounding it. A destination control shipment is used to bind all parties to the knowledge of the final destination of a shipment. A destination control statement is only required to be placed on a commercial invoice for all exports of items regulated by BAS not designated as EAR 99, unless the export is made under license exception BAG or GFT which are baggage and gift, respectively. Below is a sample of a destination control statement. This is the one that is offered by BIS, but this is not the mandated language. An exporter may put language that is more simple in the contract or that is more extensive. Finally, we reach record keeping. Records should be kept for five years from the date of the last export, re-export, transshipment, diversion, or termination of a transaction unless required for a longer period by BIS or under agencies. Transactions that are subject to record keeping requirements. Exports of commodities, software, or technology and any known re-exports, transshipments, or diversions. Exports to Canada if at any stage in the transaction it appears that a person in another country has an interest therein or if items are to be re-exported, transshipped, or diverted from Canada to another foreign country, and any other transaction subject to EAR, including negotiations connected with those transactions. Information specifically about record keeping practices can be found in 15 CFR Part 762. In this presentation, we discuss general background information about AES, filing in AES, and lastly, record keeping. Here at the Clark Esposito Law Firm, our goal is to help streamline the global business operations of importers, exporters, and the companies that support them. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for viewing.